What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to another Deep Rock Galactic video. Today we have another weapon overclock overview lined up for your enjoyment. If you haven't seen this series before, first, welcome, and be sure to check out the rest of the videos I've done in this series, because I might have already covered a weapon that you like to use. In any event, here we dive a bit deeper into the weapons the classes have access to, and go over their quirks and overclocks so you can see if it's the weapon to add to your build. Today I am tackling another choice of weapons owned by our friend the Scout with his sci-fi powerhouse, the Drac-25 Plasma Carbine. So if you guys are ready, let's talk about the Plasma Carbine and the kinds of tricks and overclocks it has access to, so you can see if it's the primary weapon to add to your build. By the way, thank you to everyone for helping me get to 5,000 subscribers. I really can't understate how much this means to me, and if you want to join the community, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you never miss another upload. I can get anywhere, anytime. So as is custom with these videos, first before going into all the overclocks surrounding the Plasma Carbine, we need to understand this weapon as it stands normally so that we know what exactly these overclocks can change. The Drac-25 Plasma Carbine is the third primary weapon the Scout has access to, meaning that you will have to level up your Scout class to at least level 18 in order to unlock it. It functions almost identically to the Scout's assault rifle, at least at a base level, with a high rate of fire and close to medium range. However, it has some very unique aspects to it that separate it from the rest of the Scout's kit. First, unlike his other primaries, the Plasma Carbine doesn't use a traditional ammo system. You don't shoot and then reload when you run out of ammo, and instead the weapon uses an overheat mechanic similar to the gunner's minigun and the driller's EPC. Each shot causes the temperature of the gun to increase, and will decrease when not shooting after a few seconds. If the gun reaches maximum temperature, it will overheat and not be able to be used for a short time. This means technically you can shoot this gun forever and not reload, but you will need to stop shooting regularly to allow the gun to cool down. Also, the shots fired actually have a slight travel time instead of being hit scan. This means you actually have to lead your shots in order to hit those faraway targets. This could take some getting used to, especially if you are manning the scout and coming over from the M1000 or the assault rifle, which are both hit scan weapons. The last thing to note is that the base direct damage of this weapon is actually split into two different damage categories. 50% of it is kinetic damage, and 50% is disintegrate damage. What this means essentially is things killed by the Drac have a chance to completely dissolve out of existence instead of fall over limp and dead, which can be very useful for taking out things like Praetorian because it causes them not to release their fart clouds when they die. Simply put, the Drac is quite a versatile weapon that can seem a little bit complex at first, but once you learn the ropes for it, it can be extremely useful, especially in the right hands. I'm having the best time in my life right now! Next up, of course, it's time to talk about the upgrades of the hour with the Drac's overclocks. As of Season 4, the Plasma Carbine has 7 overclocks, with 2 clean, 2 balanced, and 3 unstable. Next, as always, we'll go through each of them and talk about what they do, and the kinds of ways that you can utilize them. So with that, let's start with the clean overclocks, and first on the list is aggressive venting. The description reads, Directional vents burn everything around you and send enemies running when the weapon overheats. They also reduce the overheat recovery time. So this is kind of an interesting one to start off with because this overclock wants you to do the one thing that you typically don't want to do with the weapon like this, which is to let the gun overheat. Now at first, that sounds like it would be a bad thing, but what this overclock does is it causes a large burning AoE on all enemies around you when you overheat. Additionally, the overheat duration is reduced by 0.5 seconds. This overclock is actually very strong, especially when paired with one of the Plasma Carbine's built-in mods, the Manual Heat Dump. This essentially lets you reload the Plasma Carbine by forcibly causing an overheat that is significantly reduced in duration based on the temperature when you triggered it. Essentially, you can overheat your weapon on demand after firing for just a short amount of time. This means you can, in essence, spam the AoE burn effect of the aggressive venting that causes big crowd damage around you. This is a great overclock if you just want to focus on very good crowd control and like being up close and personal with the swarms. Just keep overheating and blazing everything around you. The next clean overclock we have is Thermal Liquid Coolant. This one reads, with a liquid coolant fitted to the weapon's thermal system, it transfers heat more efficiently, accelerating its cooling rate and reducing heat per shot. So this is the obligatory ammo conservation overclock that is pretty standard for almost all weapons. It gives you 25% better cooling rate and 15% less heat generated per shot, making it easier for you to keep shooting longer. So again, similar to overclocks of this nature we have covered in the past, you can never go wrong with just giving you more ammo efficiency, or in this case, better heat management. It's a good safe option for when you don't want to think too much, and it gives you a good blanket improvement of the weapon's overall stats. 
Moving over to the balanced overclocks, first we have impact deflection. This one reads, tinkering with the particle density makes your projectiles react on impact with armor and surfaces, making them bounce up to two times. However, the rate of fire needs to be reduced to keep the gun from exploding in your hands. So this is definitely one of the more quirky options for the Drac, but still useful if set up properly. Essentially, this overclock gives your projectiles the ability to bounce off of terrain or even enemies and potentially hit another target. This is compensated by a minus two to the weapon's rate of fire. This overclock is certainly in an interesting position. First, there really isn't any way to guide the bounce shots unless you are really, really good at calculating angles, which I am not. But if you are, then you can set up some crazy collateral shots or trick shots by bouncing from one enemy to the other. If you are using the Plasma Splash mod, then one trick you can try if the enemies are on the ground is to actually shoot right in front of them so it bounces up to hit them because the splash could potentially hit them with two times the damage. Ultimately, this is a very fun and quirky overclock that does take a little bit of brain power to use properly, but can be very satisfying to trickshot those glyphids. The second balanced overclock we have is the rewiring mod. The description says, by rewiring the thermal systems into a secondary cell and connecting it to the primary battery, your weapon can convert the energy from overheating into ammo. However, this reduces the maximum capacity of the primary battery significantly. So this is definitely a very unique mod that does some interesting things. In essence, it gives the gun the ability to regenerate ammo from overheating. In exchange, the weapon's battery capacity is reduced by 225 and the overheat duration is increased by 0.8 seconds. So the ammo regeneration is kind of hard to quantify, but basically on a full overheat, you will recover around 65-70% to 70 of the used ammunition. This means that your ammo efficiency is extremely good because you're using much less ammo than you are actually shooting. This makes the reduction in battery capacity not nearly as detrimental as you will essentially be refunding it with time. The overheat duration is a bit annoying since, similar to aggressive venting, you want to be overheating a lot, but it still isn't terribly bad to make it unusable. This is another overclock where the manual heat dump could prove useful. However, keep in mind that you won't be getting back nearly as much ammo as you would with a full overheat. Personally, I feel like this one isn't too crucial and it feels like a very complex way to be more ammo efficient, but perhaps I haven't had enough experience to see its full potential. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this one. Next up, it's time to go for the unstable overclocks. The first one for the plasma carbine is the overtuned particle accelerator. The description reads, the particle accelerator has been tuned way over safety standards to push the damage output to the limit. The modifications comes with a price to overall stability of the weapon and increased heat generation. So this overclock turns the plasma carbine into a plasma launcher. It increases the direct damage by a whopping 8, giving it some crazy damage output. However, it reduces the battery capacity by 150, increases the heat generated per shot by 50%, and increases the shot spread by 133%. This overclock causes the drac to hit like a freight train carrying freight trucks at the cost of being very difficult to control and maintain a safe heat. This is a great choice for dealing very heavy damage to tough enemies in short bursts. However, it does require a specific mod setup to help maintain it. There are several mods that you can equip to help offset the negative traits applied like heat shield and custom coil alignment. The biggest thing to keep in mind with this overclock is to be very disciplined with your shots, as even with the right mod setup, you will still overheat very fast if not paying attention. Still, this overclock is extremely powerful and is a great choice for those of you wanting to do insane amounts of damage. The next unstable overclock option is Shield Battery Booster. This one reads, plugging your shield directly into the weapon battery boosts the plasma feed and density significantly while at full shield and improves total ammo and rate of fire at all times. However, the extra energy generates more heat and overheating the weapon will short circuit your shield. So this is yet another very unique and interesting option for the plasma carbine. It directly interacts with your shields and gives you a bonus depending on how full they are. Going over it all, it gives you the shield battery boost effect, as well as plus one to your rate of fire, plus 100 to battery capacity, and projectile velocity increase of 100%. All of this good stuff is offset by an increase in heat generation per shot by 50% and a 50% reduction in cooling rate. So to explain the specifics of the shield battery buff in a little more detail, essentially while your shields are full, your shots have an extra 5.5 direct damage and have times two projectile speed. It also allows a player's shield to recharge much sooner after taking damage, allowing you to take advantage of the buff more 
more often. Now it does have some downsides as well. If the weapon does overheat, then the player's shields will immediately drain to zero and will not recharge until the overheat duration is completed. That means you do need to be more careful about how long you want to hold the trigger for. This overclock has two really interesting interactions. First, it pairs insanely well with the shield link perk, both with the increased regen and the boost of shield it has if it's applied to you. If you have a friend with you and you're running this overclock, see if they'll run shield link for you to help you out. Besides, it's a great perk to run anyway, so they should be fine with that. The second and last thing to note with this overclock is it is essentially unusable on missions with the shield disruption mutator. So be sure to keep that in mind because there are several times where I have not realized it myself. The final unstable overclock option is thermal exhaust feedback. This one reads, Feeding the thermal exhaust back into the system transfers the heat generated after 50% threshold to the plasma, making it increasingly hot. The modifications means more heat generated and it takes longer to get rid of during overheat. This overclock is what I consider a good example of high risk, high reward. Essentially, this overclock gives your shots extra heat damage when getting hotter to apply even more damage. To compensate, the gun has 20% more heat generated per shot and the overheat duration is increased by 0.8 seconds. So to explain the extra heat damage, for every 10% of heat the weapon has over 50%, it adds fire and heat damage up to a maximum of 12 for both fire and heat. So essentially, the closer you get to overheating, the more heat damage you will apply to the target. The reason I call this a high risk, high reward is because it wants you to stay high on the weapon's temperature, but with the stat reductions to heat management, you are constantly on the edge of overheating the weapon and losing out on DPS. If you are very good at managing heat and take modifications that help to keep you at that threshold without going too hot, then this can be very useful. Personally, I don't use this one that much because I feel like I'm always stressed out over the fear of overheating. However, in the right hands, it can do some very strong heat damage. I can get anywhere, anytime. So with all these overclocks a bit more explained, hopefully you have a better idea of how to use the plasma carbine to great effect. Honestly, the Scout is the class I feel as though has the simplest weapons, but are all still capable of doing many different things thanks to the variety of overclocks that they have. The Drac is a perfect example of this as you really can set it up for so many different playstyles. You can be a crowd control master with the aggressive venting, a trick shot master with the impact deflection, or let out the scout's inner driller with the thermal exhaust feedback and burn bosses to a crisp. The Plasma Carbine has so many ways to show that it is the best scout primary weapon. Well, that covers the Plasma Carbine and the overclocks it has access to and how you can use them as efficiently as possible. Now you can decide if the Drac is the right primary to add to your build. If you guys like this and want to see more videos covering the weapon overclocks, let me know down below. And again, thank you all so much for 5,000 subscribers. I can't wait to hit 10k and I hope you all will be there for the journey. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please give it a like because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time for another video.